You know, the world of English is a fun and exciting place to be. I'm so glad you could join me for another lesson. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we are going to look at an aspect of all our lives which can affect us externally through what we see in the world around us and internally by the way we feel about ourselves. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the theme of image. The word image is a general term for the appearance of something. The shape, colour and size of something combine to create a thing. An object which can be seen has an image. In one way or another, the thing you are looking at will have an effect on you. This can be a positive or negative one. It can leave you feeling either good about it and liking it or repulsed and disliking it. An image can have a long lasting effect on you. An image can change your life forever. The image of something ties in with our emotions. This can occur consciously or unconsciously. You might see an attractive person in the street or a nice pair of shoes in a shop window. A painting in an art gallery might make you feel some deep emotion. An old photograph that captured a moment of your childhood may conjure up a fond memory. A photograph is probably the best example of an image that can make you feel the most intense emotions, especially if there is a direct physical connection to the subject of the photo. A family member or a friend you have lost touch with, or a member of your family who is now dead. You may not be aware of it, but the appearance of something has a greater importance in your daily life than you realise. This is very true when it comes to buying things. To get you to part with your money is not easy. However, with some clever word usage and a bit of jazzy imagery, it is possible to be gently coerced into spending your hard-earned cash. The method is a simple one, but one which can have a deep impact on not just one person, but a whole nation. Of course, we are talking about advertising. Let's face it, we all need things. We need food to live, and we have to keep ourselves clean and healthy. 
we need to get around and we need to be able to live happily but most important of all we need to feel good about ourselves advertising uses these wants to gently persuade us into buying a particular product such as a certain brand of toothpaste or a new snazzy mobile phone or that latest model of car most of these items rely on your self-image to trigger you into buying them your self-image is probably the most important aspect of your life it is what you see when you look in the mirror it is your own view of yourself In psychology, the self-image is seen as an important part of our way of thinking. Self-image determines how you see yourself and, more importantly, how you imagine others see and think of you. So, looking good or having the latest car or wearing the latest fashion can boost your self-image. You will feel better about yourself. If you feel that other people admire you, then you feel great. It is your self-image that advertisers are trying to reach. If you drive this car, you will be admired. If you use this toothpaste, then you will have nice white teeth. If you carry this brand of mobile phone, then people will think you are really cool. Of course, it is possible to become too aware and worried about your self-image. You may become self-centered and shallow people may see you as vain and conceited a person who is too concerned with their appearance or looks can be described as narcissistic that person is a narcissist narcissism is a deep obsession with yourself you love yourself too much In our day-to-day -day lives, image plays an important role. When we are out shopping for fresh food, we are constantly judging the image of what we are looking at. A red apple might look better than a green one. A tomato with its stalk and leaves attached may look fresher. The image of even the most simple thing can alter the way we see it. Of course, what is pleasing to one person may not be so to another. This is why offering more choice to shoppers is a common one. You can buy some fresh tomatoes or pick up some that have been put in a can. More choice means more customers. We often see image as being a real thing. The thing we look at has an image. It leaves an impression on us. But image can also exist in the mind. We can imagine anything. Your imagination allows you to run free. Albeit in a dreamlike way. Creativity tends to come from this imaginary process, so the power of imagery is a forceful one, be it right in front of your eyes or up here in your mind.
There are many moments in your life where the way you look and how you show yourself to others is important. For example, when you are attending job interviews while looking for work. You need to make sure that the image you are projecting is a positive one. There is a strong belief that first impressions are the most important ones. So it is crucial to make sure that the first impression you make on the person who could end up being your employer is a good one. A smart and tidy appearance can go a long way. There is a saying in English, beauty is only skin deep. This means that the outward appearance of a person does not give a complete picture of what they are like. It is what lies deep down in a person's character that is important. Also, it is worth remembering that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What might seem attractive to one person may be completely repugnant or repulsive to someone else. Take a look at these images. Do they affect you in any way? Photographs and video playback allow us to relive moments from our lives and in some cases see things that will never happen again. To see those precious moments again can have a deep impact on you. When you take a photo or a video clip, you are capturing a moment of time, so it can be cherished forever. The word image is one which is used a lot nowadays. How we view certain images of people is a deep seated one. The image of the young, vibrant and fun. The image of the middle age, controlled and responsible. The image of the elderly, alone and rejected. Of course, these images are all cliches and are not necessarily true. A cliché is an overused action, expression or conclusion. In reality, a young person may be unhappy and alone, while a middle-aged person might be out enjoying life and still having fun, while an elderly person may still have a young outlook on life and be happy 
and content. We sometimes place an image on a group of people wrongly. The viewed image can be translated in many ways and more often than not, we end up reaching the wrong conclusion. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and that it has left a positive image with you and made a strong impact on you. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying thank you for watching me teaching you and of course to ta for now. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Definitely not you, I'm afraid. Go away. That's not very nice. <laughs>